Okay, so it's always nice to uh, start the class uh, with the um, reflection on the Metta Sutta. So the Metta Sutta is, um, is, is spoken on um, the words of loving kindness. Uh, this is what should be done by one who is skilled in goodness and knows the path of peace. Let him be able and upright, straightforward and gentle in speech, humble and not contented, contented and easily satisfied. Not, built, not, not busy with duties and, and frugal in their ways, peaceful and calm and wise and skillful, not proud or demanding in nature. Let them not do the slightest thing that the wise would later reprove. Wishing in gladness and in safety, may all beings be happy. Whatever living beings they may be, whether they are weak or strong, or meeting none, the great or the mighty, medium, short or small, the seen and the unseen, those living near and far away, those born and to be born, may all beings be happy. Let none deceive another or despise any beings in any state. Let none through anger or you will wish harm upon another, even as, as a mother protects with her life her child, her only child, so with a boundless heart should one cherish all living beings, radiating kindness over the entire world, spreading upwards to the skies and downwards to the depth, outwards and unbounded, free from hatred and ill will, whether standing or walking, seated or lying down, free from drowsiness, one should sustain this recollection. This is to be the sublime abiding, by not holding to force few, the pure-hearted one, having clarity of vision, being free from all sense desire, is not born again into this world. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Oh, um, I do. Write it down over to you. Thank yeah. you very much. I do apologize. My my voice is not that good. Um, I just came back from Malaysia, le, the last two and a half weeks ago, le, uh, visiting my um, grandmother and my relative, but it was since 10 years since I was back in Malaysia. So I thought it was a great opportunity to visit my granny. Uh, she's 84 years old, so I don't know how long she'll be still around. So um, yeah, so I took the opportunity to go to uh, Malaysia and to um, just do some Dharma teaching and uh, help to um, support Bhante Bodhidharma to do a a trade, trade day retreat at um, Metal Lodge in Johor Bahru in Malaysia. Then after that, we went to um, um, B BGF or Buddhist Buddhist Gem Fellowship le, in uh, KL Kuala Lumpur. Le. Yep. So uh, yeah. So that was um, quite a um, we say interesting experience. <laughs> um, yeah. So it was quite good. I I really enjoyed that. Le, and also wonderful. Bodhi Dasha also re really enjoy it too. Le. So um, yeah, so experience was, um, I think, better than what we expected. Um, we thought that because um, I have been back for 10 years and uh, Bodhi Dasha, Venerable Bodhi Dasha is quite new to Malaysia. Le. So um, probably people don't really know him much. Yeah. Um, but the turnout was pretty good. Le, because in, um, in um, the Metal Lodge, there was about maybe 
something like 20, 25 to 28 people would turn up. So that was a good crowd uh, for a three day retreat. And after that, we went to um, KL uh, at BGF, uh, and the crowd was, was basically a full house, uh, about 50 people uh, that turned out for the one day retreat. Uh. Yeah, so uh, yeah, so it was quite successful, uh, and um, because um, Venerable Bodhi Josh and myself, we did give a lot of talks and guidance, uh, and um, yeah, the weather there was really hot, about 36 degrees, quite humid, and uh, especially in KL, I noticed there's a lot of pollution uh, from the traffic jam. Um, yeah, so I do apologize. I come back and my, my throat is um, not in the best condition. Uh, from um, too much um, talking <laughs> and eat in the view, uh, and also <laughs> eating uh, eating the um, the um, the breakfast and lunch dinner uh, when we were when we were there. Uh. I mean, there's so many people that come off a dinner in the morning and also at lunchtime uh, that um, basically me and Venerable Bodhidharma <laughs> we can only finish maybe about five or ten percent uh, of what is offered uh, uh, every single day. <laughs> Yeah, that was um, yeah, it was very nice and tasty, uh, but it was over the top. <laughs> but anyway, get, getting back to um, the whole experience, uh, so it was quite very uplifting, um, inspiring, uh, and 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 quite joyful uh, experience that me and Venerable Bodhidharma has in Malaysia. Uh. So yeah, so that's interesting. Uh, so that's to let me know what's happening uh, since we met last time. Uh, so yeah, I'm glad to be back in. Um, Perth Bodhiyana Monastery, and uh, yeah, so the experience is good. Uh, I, one thing I did realize, uh, you know whether where we go uh, around the world, um, there seems to be a lot of interest for people to um, basically just to practice, to listen to Dharma, and to uh, basically yeah, learn, learn meditation, and also to uh, deepen their practice. So it's always been a great uh, source of uh, pleasure uh, and happiness uh, to able to teach because when 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 the monks teach uh, we both benefit the the lay people listen they learn and they get uplifted and uh, yeah you get um, a lot of uh, gladness peace and joy and wisdom uh, from when the monks teach uh, but also when the monks teach it also um, uplift our heart and uh, when when you teach you, you also learn at the same time. You, you learn that what works and the best instruction to keep to um, our lay supporter as much as possible. Because learning is a way to sharpen one's uh, wisdom and understanding. Um, yeah, so that's one thing I enjoy teaching uh, because it does sharpen my wisdom and uh, improve my um, speaking skill. Uh, because in, in the early days, uh, I find that I was just over, <laughs> over the place. Uh, and very like nervous and a bit scared, uh, and I, I felt like I I'm just a junior monk. Uh, my understanding on on the um, the intellectual part of Buddhism uh, is not that good, uh, but I think in terms of practice, yeah, it's okay. I mean, I, my practice is, is is good enough to keep me happy uh, and um, able to um, uh, be happy in in monastic life. Uh. So uh, yeah, so time to time. Teaching is a way to sharpen my, my, um, my understanding and wisdom. Because the Buddha did say, uh, there are five ways uh, to develop calm, peace, happiness and insight. Yeah? So it's not just meditation. So the Buddha say one is meditation, one is uh, listening to the Dharma, and, um, and one is um, reading the Dharma or memorizing it. Uh, another, and another one is basically um, reflecting on the, on the um, teaching uh, once you learn it. And, and the last one is basically teaching. When you teach the Dharma, uh, you, you learn at the same time. All these five, when you, when you practice it, it leads to peace, joy, happiness and insight. Yeah. Because the mind becomes glad and peaceful uh, when we listen to the teaching uh, of the Four Noble Truths, uh, the Eightfold Path. Uh, so yeah, so that's one thing I find the, the benefit of teaching yeah, because I'm learning and also our supporters are learning at the same time. Yeah, so I do enjoy teaching. Yeah. Not too much, not too much. Yeah, because I find that if I, if I, if I do too much teaching, yeah, then I, I get sore throat right now. Not right, like, right now. Yeah. yeah, so one of the um, interesting questions that we get yeah, when we were teaching yeah, was people say that um, 
Yeah. Is it important to to know everything, everything in detail, like to read the suttas, to um, understand the Abhidhamma, and to um, yeah, to just read a lot and uh, basic intellectual think about what I was learned and here, and um, I don't know. I think I find that it is good to learn a lot, and it's good to read a lot, and um, reading is is good way of learning things. But there is many, many factors uh, in order for, for the mind uh, to in, increase our virtue. So the virtue is basically keeping our precept well, keeping the, um, um, the eight precepts on the opposite day. And um, yeah, so when you keep those five and eight precepts, uh, basically we, we develop uh, virtue. And uh, then when we develop virtue, uh, then we slowly we do the work. Uh, that will develop the heart and the mind, basically purify the mind. Eh? Because just reading uh, books along, eh? or reading the, the, the suttas, eh? is not going to purify the heart. You need to practice. You need to be a good person, a kind person, practice metta, practice the four Brahma Viharis, um, loving kindness, metta, compassion, karuna, and metita, eh? and opekala, equanimity. Eh? So when you de develop all these wholesome qualities, uh, um, it uplifts one's heart and it purifies the mind. Uh, because when the mind is pure uh, from defilements, uh, then you see the cause and condition. Because when you listen to the teaching, it, it goes back to the source. The source is the mind. But the mind, if it's clouded uh, by defilements, uh, mainly greed, hatred and delusion, uh, we don't see things clearly. But if we basically listen, we practice, we purify the heart, uh, then it goes back to the source. The source is, is our heart and our mind. So when we go back into the source uh, to see this outflowing of the mind, so the outflowing of the mind is our thoughts, our emotion, uh, and our feelings. It's always coming up, out from the state. We'll say in here and in here. Uh, and uh, it goes through the five senses. Then we go into the world and we attach to the world. And we will we'll do things uh, and behave in a certain way uh, to get what we want. Uh. So um, yeah, so the work of of, of um, dharma practice uh, is basically to purify our our action, speech, and mind. Action can be done easily with keeping the precept, but the the speech is a bit uh, harder. We have to be mindful, and our thoughts is probably the hardest because our mind is always very active. So when we was giving the the um, the class uh, in uh, KL. Uh, we know just people are, some people are very restless, some people are very peaceful, uh, and uh, some people think a lot uh, and have a lot of questions. Uh. So I say it does take time uh, to basically calm, calm the mind down and make it calm and peaceful. Uh, because in, in a city life like Kaola or any, any big city, uh, people are very busy. You go to work, they come back from work, um, they have a lot of responsibility and duties. Uh, for work and, and family life, family, family life. So when they come to a retreat center or a, a Buddhist center, it does, it does take a while for the mind to slowly calm down and become peaceful and silent. And when the mind is silent, and when our body becomes very relaxed and peaceful, then hopefully calm and peaceful rise. Because I say it does take a while for this mind to calm down. Because I told the um, retreatants, don't, don't be too hard on yourself. Because to calm and still the mind, it does take a bit of momentum. And I say that, I did Google on, um, on, um, on, on Google, uh, that um, this is what Google, Google say, uh, that a human being uh, have up to about something like um, 80, 70 to even 50,000 thoughts a day. Yep, so that's a lot of thinking yeah, that we think about. Yeah. So in an hour, it's about 3,000 to um, 2,000 thoughts an hour. So in a minute, yeah, that is about 60 to 30 thoughts a minute. Yeah. So it's almost a thought every second. So we, we can be very active. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, so it, it just takes a while yeah, to calm the mind down. So that's why when we give a, a guidance, uh, sometimes we have to give quite a few instructions uh, just for this body to relax 
and for the mind to slowly unwind, calm down and become peaceful. You see the first day is the hardest, then the second day it becomes easier. Then the third day, yeah, yeah, it's a lot better. But you see on a traded retreat, it's not too bad. You can get enough calm, peaceness and stillness in the mind. But on a one, one day retreat, we, we find it can be a bit rushed. So I think next time we'll plan it for maybe a three day retreat in KL. Yep. So yeah, so it does take, take a while for the mind to calm down. Like even when I came back from, um, from Malaysia, yeah, I, I, I do notice my mind was racing a bit. Yep. But I was quite high and quite joyful. So the whole experience is very lift, uplifting. But when I come back to the Kuti, on the way walking to Kuti, Kuti at Bodhiyana Monastery, up at Hermit Hill, I just noticed, wow, the, the forest up here is very peaceful. Like you can hear the, the winds and the birds. And um, yeah, and just the insect. And at night, yeah, it's so quiet. Yeah, it's just the silence. Yep. So sometimes when I do leave the monastery and go to a very busy place, uh, um, the center and the dharma is going to be very peaceful. But when you come back to the monastery, yeah, wow, this place is ultra peaceful. Uh, yep. There's no, there's no traffic, no traffic jam. Uh, there's not heaps of people running around the place. Uh, and also you, you feel so free uh, and at ease. Uh, and those are the ideal condition. Uh, basically to calm the mind and to still the mind. Yep. Because in order to deepen our, our meditation, you still the mind. We need those conditions. Because um, I was reflecting, the Buddha was basically born in the forest before he was, he was enlightened as a, um, a young, young um, prince or rich person of a clan. And he did um, he renounce and head to the forest uh, where he practiced for a few years uh, until he had broken through. Uh, and even he was fully enlightened, uh, he did spend a lot of time in the forest uh, because the forest is a place of comfort and peace and freedom. And as he got older, uh, his heart was always inclined back to the forest. Uh, so he went back to the forest uh, and passed away and went to Parinibbana. Uh, yep. So I realized, wow, yeah. The forest is basically our natural home for a meditator and a simple forest monk. I'm like myself, I'm a pretty simple forest monk. So yeah, so my heart is always inclined to quiet, peaceful place because there's a lot of peace, peace and freedom and joy. Yep. Yeah, so it's always very joyful to come back to the monastery and I head back to my forest and spend a lot of time by myself um, watch the plants grow around my kuti and enjoy the birds and kangaroos eh, that come and visit. Eh. Yeah. yeah, so that's a short reflection. Eh. Mm. Yeah. Well, I guess we can um, yeah, do some garden meditation. Eh. Yeah. Because um, yeah, I've been talking a lot eh, overseas, eh. so it's time to like slowly unwind and just calm the mind down yep so yeah so meditation is basically learning to uh, have a break to really unwind to just let go of all our burdens and responsibility because in the world it can very be it can be very very busy and sometimes if you're not careful that be the busyness uh, we carry along in our heart and in our mind to the point that we think a lot, we plan a lot uh, and it becomes like a, a condition uh, that we cannot like slowly let go. But the training of meditation uh, or the training of the mind uh, is just to slowly calm things down, to settle all our business and all our responsibility. Because if we don't settle our business and responsibility, then at night we find it hard to sleep because the mind is very active and we still hold, hold on to uh, a lot of things in life. I mean, the good things are nice to hold, hold on to, it up, uplifts our heart, 
but sometimes a lot of negative um, um, things that we might face uh, and those are the things that we must let go because um, if we don't let go uh, it builds up in our heart and it becomes stronger and stronger then it consumes our heart and our mind uh, to the point that uh, uh, become very anxiety a lot strong anxiety and um, and fear arise so that's why it's so important uh, just to ground our awareness in this body because we can free, feel the tension uh, and the tightness within our body uh. that's why the bo body awareness is very important the more we can relax the body then we can let go of our, our anxiety uh, and fear uh. yeah, because the body can be really tense so sometimes I realize when people are sitting in meditation uh, in, the, in the group uh, they are just using willpower uh. because willpower is what they, um, they are conditioned at lay life to study hard to um, be responsible, to work hard and to, to achieve. But because of those conditions is so strong, we bring it um, back to home to the point where yeah, fear and anxieties do arise. So the, let, the letting go of this um, tension within the body is very important. So we let go of the tension first, then we let go of, of, of the tension in our, in our mind. Yep. So I, I do remember that. Before I was a, um, a meditator, uh, I used to uh, worry so much uh, when I got a headache. Uh, when I started doing meditation, uh, then my headache slowly, slowly went away. Uh, and I felt like I was, was a happy young child again. Uh. So that's something that I really miss uh, and I always long for. So I think that's one reason why I became, <laughs> I became a, a monastic. Uh. So I just feel like a young child again. Uh. Just almost calm, relaxed and carefree. Uh. Okay, so we will start uh, the meditation. Uh. So please, let's please just sit down, relax. And uh, if you're in a dark environment, that's, that's, that's ideal. For me, I got like one big spotlight here, another <laughs> big spotlight here. Uh. And sometimes another one in the back. Uh, so um, yeah, I do get a lot of light here. Yeah. So yeah, I, I guess that's the nature uh, of doing online garden meditation. But you do have the luxury of having a quiet dark room and peaceful. So yeah, so on that class, um, one of the ladies in the class was saying that she'll meditate la, and she'll get um, tension here in the head. La. And we say this is um, meditation, uh, headache, because when you watch the breath, uh, you basically putting all your effort, uh, watching our uh, breathing here. Uh. So I say, okay, sometimes it's better not to use the, the, the word watch, because watching is putting effort here. Just use the word awareness. So awareness is, is, is basically knowing. So we know, you know that you, you're listening to my voice. You know that now you're sitting on, on, your, on your chair. You know that um, you're leaning in the back. You know that your 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 lower back is on the um, on the chair, or your, or your bottom is on the chair, and you know that your feet is on the ground. Then, when you bring your awareness back to your breath, you know that you're breathing. So that's the amount of awareness you need. Eh? Just knowing, knowing the body, and knowing the breath. Eh? Yep. So it's not using focus or effort. Eh? Just pure awareness. Yep, so with pure awareness, we gently bring our awareness to the front of our face and we slowly close our eye. With our eye closed, we are fully aware of our body. Yep, and with that awareness, we always start off just relaxing our body. You can you see, I like to start from the, from the top of our head, then Gently bring your awareness right to the top of your head and we relax. Relax our head and we relax our forehead and we bring your awareness to our face. Then you relax your face. With your face relaxed, also 
relax our eyes. Then we bring our awareness to our jaw. Relax our jaw. Then we relax our throat. And now we gently bring our awareness to our back, our neck. So we relax our neck. With our neck relax, now we gently bring your awareness to our upper body, the part that is connected to our arm socket. We know if it's tight or raised, we just bring it down and relax our upper body. Now bring your awareness to your right arm and relax your right arm. And we do the same with our left arm. Relax our left arm. And if you need to, you can please move your both your arm around, make it comfortable and relax both our arms and now we bring our awareness to our hands both our hands and our fingers and if you need to please move your hands and fingers around and just relax relax both our hands and fingers make sure it's nice and comfortable and loose and just relax your fingers and now we bring our awareness gently back to our chest and we just notice we are breathing in and breathing out gently and calmly and naturally breathing in and breathing out and we relax our chest And now, we bring our awareness to our tummy. Make sure our tummy is nice and loose. Our waist is not too tight from our clothing. And we relax our tummy. And now, we bring our awareness back up to our spine. So gently just relax our spine from the top of our neck slowly down to our upper back and down to the middle of our back and all the way down to the bottom part where we're sitting on the chair, on the cushion or on the sofa, relax our back. And now we bring our awareness to our right leg. And we just notice any part of our right leg that is a bit stiff or tight and just relax all the way down from our knees down to our ankle. And now we bring the same awareness to our left leg. From the top down to our knees and down to our ankle. And if you need to, please gently move off your leg around and just relax. Relax our leg. And if you need to, you can always adjust your whole body and make it as comfortable as possible. And finally, we bring our awareness to both our feet and we relax both our feet from my ankle down to our heel and all the way down to our toes 
and if you need to, you can gently move it around and just relax our toe and both our feet. With this whole body relax. Now we can finally bring our awareness to our whole body and just feel any part of our body that's still a bit tense or tight or a bit achy, a slight pain. And we just relax any part of our body that's still stiff or tight. Move it around and just relax our whole body. Now it's time to make peace with this body, this old body, or sometimes this sick body. Or if you are too young, this old, this tired body. So we make peace with the body and we relax this whole body from our head all the way down to our feet. When the body is fully relaxed, now we bring our awareness back to our face. Then we notice our breathing in and breathing out calmly and peacefully. I just like to use the word just breathing in peace and breathing out relax. Peace and relax. Or sometimes calm and letting go. Calm and letting go. And just breathe naturally, peacefully and calmly. Meditation is just learning to make peace and relax this body. When the body is relaxed, then we use our breathing to calm, to calm our mind, to calm our thoughts, to calm our emotion, and to make peace with ourselves, and especially with this body, this body that's tired, old, or sometimes sickly. Was saying on the retreat, the mind will wander time to time to past, to future, to what happened during the day. It's okay. Sometimes we have to see our thoughts are just like the clouds moving past during the day. Some days it can be very stormy, some days there's thunder, sometimes there's lightning, and some days it's very beautiful and clear and bright. Some days can be very windy. So our mind is just like that. It goes with cause and conditioning during the day. But now it's time to make peace with the moment and just watch our thoughts pass by just like the clouds and the storm during the day. We watch our thoughts and emotion, but we make peace with ourselves and allow it to pass.
as you become more calm and peaceful, you tend to feel your body more. So this is probably when body, the body awareness can be quite strong, but it's okay. You can just gently move your body, adjust it, adjust the tension. Let's relax and make peace with this body and gently let it go. When the body is comfortable, then gently bring your awareness back to the breathing. And there's a way of our breathing in and breathing out, softly and calmly. Making peace with this moment Meditation is not about stopping our thinking. It's spacey, calming, everything down. The more we calm our mind and our thoughts, then the more peaceful and relaxed we become. awareness just to feel our body and just relax relax this body once the body become relaxed then we can slowly relax our mind and calm our thoughts As things become more calm and peaceful, you will just be aware of the silence of the room. So just allow the silence of the room just to calm, calm the mind further. things are quiet and settled, we make peace with the moment and especially with ourselves. So please enjoy the rest of the quiet time.
So we will finish soon, but it's always good just to reflect how you are, how you feel, and how peaceful you are at this moment. So it's always good to be aware of one's condition of one's heart and mind before the meditation and after. So when you reflect on the, the condition now, and you realize how more peaceful, calm and relaxed you are now. So, just reflect on the state of your mind now, just for a few more minutes. Okay, so let's slowly come out on the meditation and just relax for a minute. Yeah, sometimes it just takes a while for our senses to um, slowly come about. Yeah, I'm not sure how well people can hear my voice eh? because on the um, both retreat eh? in um, Malaysia, eh? one of the feedback eh? from the retreatants eh? is like they don't hear my voice clearly. Eh? Maybe sometimes I might speak too softly. Eh? So yeah, please, um, please let me know. Eh? But John, that your voice has definitely come through very clearly. Okay. And it also does come through very clearly because I always listen to your podcast too, and it comes through very clearly on the podcast. Okay. Uh, I think we, we probably invested well in, in the recording equipment and microphone here. Uh, but I think in Malaysia, the, um, they don't have the best quality uh, recording system. So maybe that's why um, they can't hear me properly. Uh, in some places, they have like f fan going on the background because they have this big hole and it's quite quite hot and humid. So they have this big fan that's running and maybe that's why they don't hear, hear my voice pro properly to the point where I have to raise really loudly just for people in the background to hear. But I guess the recording system here is excellent. <laughs> yeah, so um, it's hard for me to gauge how much instruction I, I give 
because one thing I noticed the feedback from um, both retreat in Malaysia le, some people say is um, excellent is um, is the more in, more instruction the better some people say that there's too much instruction le, um, it's become a distraction le, and some people say it's just the right instru you know, in instruction le, and some people say they don't want any instruction at all <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, so sometimes we just give, give uh, 15 minutes instruction. So that's, that's why this, this, this time I just finished, they did not give too much instruction uh, and just have more time for people to really enjoy the meditation. Uh. And uh, sometimes we do recommend people if they need to do walking meditation, they can just get out and do walking meditation first. And when they are more relaxed, um, they're more mindful of the body, then they can come back and just do sitting. Because sitting meditation is something that we, we, we also teach on the retreat because sometimes when, um, when we are very busy, we have a very busy lifestyle schedule and our, our mind is very active because, we, because our thoughts is like almost endless. When we sit down, it's, it's just racing non-stop in our head to the point that we feel like we're going mad or crazy. Yeah? So sometimes it's good to do some walking meditation. So on the retreats, we ask people to just do walking meditation back and forward on a straight line. So basically for those that haven't learned med walking meditation before, yeah? it's basically when you're walking, you, you gaze, gaze down maybe one or two meters right in front of you. Yeah? And when you walk, you just lift up one leg and step down. Then the next leg, lift and step down. So you're aware of the whole motion of your leg, uh, walking forward uh, and place it on the ground. So you, you're aware of the feeling of the touch, raising up and stepping down. Then the next leg movement. So you're aware of the whole movement of your, of your leg. Uh, your hand is basically just like this, hold like this and just walk back, maybe 20 or 30 space uh, steps depend how big your room is or your hall or in the back of the garden so what walking meditation does uh, it, it grounds your awareness uh, to the whole body and it, the more you walk then the awareness of the body will, will increase then as you're fully aware of the moment of your whole body yeah, then uh, yeah so you're basically grounding your awareness uh, on the whole body yeah? just mainly the motion of the leg then your mind, your, your thoughts will slowly calm down, become more calm, and more relaxed. And if you walk longer, after a while, you feel like it's just automatically walking back and forward. And sometimes for some people that like to do walking meditation, they find that after maybe half an hour, one hour, then you feel like it's just floating. It's just floating, yeah? And your body become very light, yeah? And you just like automatically just walking and just turning around and just walking and turning around back and forward. And this is aware of the whole motion. So yeah, it's, they call that you're in the zone. So once you're in the zone, then you sit and sit and do walking, sit down and do sitting meditation. Then it's easier just to watch the breath in and out. Because um, I find it was very beneficial um, if when I was a lay person. Yep, I got all these thoughts and distraction. And um, if I find that I was very anxious, having a panic attack, or sometimes really angry as a lay person, <laughs> uh, yeah, I do a lot of walking meditation just to calm my mind down and relax the body. Once it's, once it's relaxed, yeah, then it was easier. So, uh, so you might notice I'm pretty relaxed and quite peaceful. But when I was a young, when I was a young lay person, I was really angry, uh, to the point where everyone called me Mr. Negative, uh, or fault finding. <laughs> yeah, to the point where I was just having panic attack and fear all the time, can't sleep, uh, my hand was shaking. Uh, yeah, I was, basically, I was a complete basket case. Uh, so when I, when I started learning meditation, loving kindness, uh, then I felt like happy and free again, uh, like when I was a child again almost carefree, yeah, and, uh, and I improved in my work, that I got promoted, and um, yeah, it just got better and better, so yeah, so having a um, very stable mind uh, does improve things, uh. so meditation is not just letting go, uh. 
It's just bringing your awareness back and allowing your focus. So when you do something, you do it with um, right effort, uh, right intention. And when you do things, your mind is not scattered. Yep. When you do something, you do something well. And uh, you become very stable. Your emotion is not like uh, running around the whole place, uh, like a storm. And you become very aware when you're anxious, uh, when you're angry or frustrated. Uh, then you can always just come back to the body, come back to the breath, and just calm yourself down with a couple of breaths. Uh, and sometimes when I was working here, I'll just, after lunch, I'll go sit in, the, in my car and just, just relax and just do, do some salad meditation for um, 10 minutes or 5 minutes. After that, I find, well, I'm so energized uh, that I can basically just work two shifts, uh, double shift. Uh. And um, yeah, on the retreat, I did mention like for people that work for a lot, very stressful. Uh, um, yeah, I, I was overworked and very stressful. Uh, but I was always aware of my thoughts and my feelings. Uh, and I always calm my heart and mind down. So I become a very effective worker, able to concentrate, able to do things, and also be very productive. And um, so after I pay off all my debts, I hand my letter to my boss, and I told my supervisor, supervisor I'm leaving the company. I'm going to go up to um, um, do some religious study up in the monastery. And I always remember uh, my supervisor and my boss uh, told me, Kim, don't leave. Stay in this company. They will increase everyone's pay in the future. I said, no, I'm going to do some religious study. And he told me that he have worked with so many people in, in the company. And he said that you're the most calmness and most relaxed person and able to do so much work and be very productive. And because I was calm and mindful, it actually made him very relaxed too. So that's something nice to, uh, to hear uh, from my supervisor. Uh. Yeah, so even um, meditation is not letting go. Uh. It is letting go, uh, but it's basically let go of the ne negative emotion uh, that leads to a lot of worry and anxiety. Uh. So on the retreat and KL, uh, I say all this thinking, all this reading, uh, you, you have to put it in practice. So when you put it in practice, uh, uh, you become happy in the moment, you have a healthier heart, a healthier mind, and uh, yeah, you basically live a longer life, uh, and not stressing and worrying all the time. Yeah, so um, I told the people in um, Malaysia, KL, uh, and Joel Baru, uh, like in the West, people learn meditation first to get some benefit, uh, to get some calm and peace. Uh. Once they get the result, uh, then they read more books on Dharma practice. Then they keep the precept last uh, to basically become a good person, be beyond generous and just purify the heart. Uh. But in Malaysia and Asian country, uh, it's the opposite. They keep the precept first, uh, become generous. Um, then they, they, they read a lot of books and they study a lot uh, on, on the teaching uh, and they become very smart, even smarter than the monks. Uh. Some of the questions they ask me and Bani Bodhidharma Dachala, it's so like they're so smart and like become like a professor in, in um, Sutta study yeah, that myself and Bodhi yeah, we can't even answer the, the, their smartness. Uh. I say that we, we, we basically are, we are practitioners. Uh. We're not like um, professor uh, um, of, of Dharma uh, or Sutta study. Yeah. And if they want to have an intellectual debate, uh, please talk to Arjun Pramali uh, because he's a Pali and a Sutta master. Uh. He really knows his Sutta back and, back and front. Uh. Yep. So as for myself, I only practice to get benefit. Uh. So I'm not a, um, a mad person. Uh. <laughs> a mad person when I learn, but a lay person. Uh. But also just to get some happiness uh, as a monastic. Yep. To in enjoy being a simple forest monk uh, up, in, up at um, Serpentine Monastery. Uh. Mm. Yeah. So. To become silent and peaceful uh, is something that takes, a, takes time and it does condition the, um, the mind. Uh. So I told the people on the retreat, it's like learning. We learn to write with our right hand. So the right hand is the thinking and doing mind. There's always busy thinking, planning uh, and, and um, very active. 
So when we write our right hand, we're always very used to using this hand. But if we learn to write with our left hand, it will take a while to condition the right of our left hand. So the left hand is like the, the mind is quiet, peaceful, but fully aware. So it does take a while for our thoughts to calm down. So once our thoughts is calmed down, it becomes just really calm, pure awareness. We are calm, we are aware, but we know. It's like, it's like you're peaceful and you're aware. And your thoughts is just like, like echo in the background. So when you know, you know things clearly. Yeah? Not like just an endless uh, scattered thoughts. Uh. Yep. So it would be hard to explain. It's like when you have a problem, uh, you think about it a lot, you can't solve the problem. But you go back home, you have a sleep. Then when you sleep, uh, the next day uh, you have a clear mind. Uh. Then you look at the problem, uh, then it makes sense very clearly. Uh. Because the mind is free from um, too much, too much uh, clutter. Uh. Yep. So when you have a clear mind, uh, you see the problem, it becomes very clear, and you see the solution more clearly. Yep. Anyway, it's time to um, any questions from the um, from the group you like to ask. Yes, indeed. Would you like to start off with me reading a question for you from the chat? Thank you. Yes. Uh, I would like to ask Ajahn about feeling like feeling mad or crazy, the, like he was feeling mad or crazy that he mentioned in meditation earlier. Uh, because we face our mind in not mm. so calm states, mm. we should not force ourselves to sit down and meditate. Is that correct? Yes. Is walking meditation the best option to calm down the mind? Sometimes if we are very um, agitated or scattered or confused, sometimes we need to basically just do some walking meditation to calm the mind down. And if that don't work, um, like myself, if, if, I'm, if I'm pretty um, com complete regular, where I'm just being scolded and put down all the time <laughs> uh, in the monastery, yeah? yep. um, because sometimes I, I do make mistake. And um, if people are having a hard time, uh, sometimes they take it out on me. Uh, and if that happened, I realized, okay, I just go for a walk around the monastery, enjoy the quiet time, enjoy the scenery, watch the um, kangaroos, the birds, and um, yeah, just enjoy the whole environment of the monastery. Because the monastery do have a calming effect. Le. So when you calm down and you relax, then I walk back to my kuti and just sit and relax. Then I know it's not the best time to meditate, I just have a rest, have a nap, wake up, and once the mind is more calm and peaceful, yeah, then it's easy to do meditation. And also it's not our fault, it's just conditioning. Because um, I find that the more senior I, I am, the more responsibility I take, and the more blame I get. <laughs> so blame and fame and like fame and blame is you cannot escape from that. It's just so the, the worldly condition. Yeah. So um, yeah, the more senior I become, the more the more blame I get. Yeah. So if I go traveling overseas, I get so much praise. Then when I come back here, the cars are completely breaking down as a mess. Then people will, will basically shout at me, hey, the car is broken down. Please fix it. Do your job. Yeah. Yeah, so um, I mean, we do have a fleet of old bombs in the monastery, yeah? and um, yeah, so I mean, sometimes I, I use the word like, the cast in the monastery are a bit of a free for all, like. so if you use it, like, and uh, yeah, when they damage, yeah, they, they come looking for me yeah, to fix the cast, yeah, so yeah, so I, I still got my old karma like, as when I was a mechanic up in the mines. Yeah. Fixing all the, all the trucks and the um, all the four wheel drive and yule. So in the monastery, sometimes uh, when I mean the monastery is getting bigger and bigger, la, and we're having more and more cars. La. So things things like that do happen. To go out, the windscreen is cracked, the the tire is bald, the tires are flat. 
um, things don't work out, they run out of fuel in the vehicle, <laughs> or sometimes they crash the car, le. not once. Like one time, um, I went to India, and it was damaged. Uh, but before that, someone crashed the back, I fixed it up. Then they, a month later, they, they crashed the front, I fixed it up. I went to India, I came back, and they crashed, crashed the back again. Uh, and I, I almost lost it. Uh, I'm going, jeez, all these... Um, uh, all, all these workers in the monastery, uh, community people, they don't even have mindfulness to uh, take care of the car. Uh, how can I come up to fixing the car all the time? And I, I, uh, I just lost it. Uh, yeah, then it's not the time for me to sit down and meditate. Uh, I just to go for a walk, um, listen to a nice Dharma talk, do the metal meditation, uh, and really calm myself down. Uh. So once I calm down, uh, oh, okay, okay, it's just, it's just me being, being, um, being silly again. Uh. <laughs> yeah, because in Buddhism we have this concept of, of non self. The, the, the more we feed the self, uh, the more crazy we become. Uh. The less we feed the self, uh, just through loving kindness uh, and letting go, uh, and equanimity, uh, then the mind becomes calm and peaceful. Uh. I realized that, okay, it's just a condition of the mind. Yeah, when things go wrong, we don't, we don't feel it. When things go right, yeah, okay, we, we delight in it, uh, and it leads, leads to more peace and more happiness. Uh, yeah, that especially like Dharma teaching. Uh, so that's one thing I enjoy, uh, because when you teach, you learn, and you understand, and you help other people. Uh, so it's win-win. Uh, yeah, so I don't know. It's not interesting I've been a monk these days. I'm still learning, so I'll probably go on learning until the day I die. And if I don't get my act together, then I get reborn and start over again. <laughs> but hopefully the, um, the, the, condition, the conditioning and the seed that is planted in this life will able all of us to basically just continue on in our next life. Because this practice of um, understanding the Four Noble Truths it's very, very important. Because the whole world, people are feeding on defilements. You look at the news, there's so much trouble, so much problem in the world. Eh? And they're looking for solution outside. Eh? But as for Buddhists and practitioners, eh? we look for the problem in our heart. When we understand why we are suffering, eh? then we understand why people are suffering. It's because um, we're all human beings. Yep, so we want the world to be perfect. <laughs> it's not going to happen. But if we fix our heart and we purify our mind, then we uh, try to make ourselves as, as perfect as possible. Then we see uh, everyone in the world suffering. Yep, and because they're suffering, they are lost. They think the five senses and the worldly happiness, getting wealth, um, being famous, being very busy. Yeah, being very busy to bring them happiness. Uh. But it's just endless. It's just constantly feeding the, the self and the ego. Uh. It's only when, we, when the mind is calm and peaceful, uh, then we look inside, yeah? then we find happiness is always there. Yep. As happy as a child. Uh. Yep. So we should always try and um, condition our heart uh, to be happy and free and carefree. Yeah? Just for the moment. Then when we care and happy and free in that moment, then life is not a burden. Life becomes very um, uplifting and quite colorful. Yep. So yeah, so Venerable Bodhidharma and myself, we went and taught the, the four Brahma Viharas in, um, in Malaysia. So yeah, so in the things, simple teaching like that, people do benefit. Because people are so stressed. And the, um, the Brahma, Viharas, Brahma Viharas do remind them of being, um, having loving kindness to one's, oneself and other people, seeing the suffering in other people, uh, karuna, or compassion, uh, and, uh, and looking at the good of other people, uh, so rejoicing, uh, so medita, uh, that means rejoicing in other people's good act. Uh. And also, when things are, we have no control over, uh, then opaque, uh, being, uh, being an equanimity to one's heart. Uh, yep, and the meditation, Brings all this together. Yep. Okay, I hope that makes sense. Thank you. Right, is there anyone else who would like to unmute and ask a question or to put a question in the chat? 
Can I ask one? Yes. Please. Yeah. Yes, please. Um, so I have a problem of addiction to something. And then um, I think I have it for a very long time. I just, I just do not want to admit. I, I just do not admit it to a certain point. And then I do stop it for like, I think it's two months or something like that. But um, every, every year to summer, I get, I get a bit depressed. Mm -hmm. And then because I'm depressed, I, I end up going back to it. And oh. then when I'm going back to it, I realize that it is hard for me, harder for me to stop. I don't know why, but I just uh, start to like getting off it mm. now, like uh, these few days. And then I have a question is like, how uh, can you give me some advice on how to cope with the strong craving coming up? Because I know it is better for me to stop, but my mind will be like, because my mind wants to go back and then I will have a lot of like struggle around mm. it and I would like to have some advice on it. Okay. It's, it's normal. That's one of the most common questions that we have on the retreat. Le. Because me and Bodhidharma say that, okay, we should say, okay, just limit it to um, meditation question. Le. So um, on the interview, people come over, or when they put um, question and answer on, on, the, on the basket for us to answer, le. we somehow we knew le, that uh, people have uh, problems they have to deal with. Le. So uh, when they come out, I realized, okay, yeah, being a human being, yeah, when things happen, le, uh, it can be very traumatic and if we carry the, the trauma in our heart, le, it becomes stronger and stronger until it consumes our thoughts. When we wake up, the trauma comes back and when we uh, sleep, we have bad dreams like nightmares. Yeah, then we, we feel like we're a complete hopeless case. We fail. Le. We're not a bad, we are a bad person. We're not perfect. Uh, we made a lot of bad karma, le. but the good thing is we have to use our um, uh, reflection le, and realize le, if we didn't make some much mistake, le, then we will not learn. Because uh, if we make a mistake, le, uh, we learn, and when we learn, we let go. Like myself, I made so many mistakes, le, and when I start thinking about it, le, yeah, I become very negative, <laughs> and um, yeah, yeah. So it's like it's like the more I think about it, le, it's like I go like completely mad, le. and uh, and then my my friend, will, my monastic friend, would will notice and told me you have to, you have to stop thinking about it, le, and bring up the past. Le. It happened, le, and uh, there's nothing I can do about it. Le. I go, oh yeah, that's true. Le. I'm I'm a Buddhist monk. I meant to uh, practice well, le, but I can't. Bring, I'll bring up the problem again, again. Le. But okay, okay, I need to be more happier, be more kinder to people, le, and um, go and do teaching. So I, I did, 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 did more teaching now, le, since I have 10 reigns now. Actually, I have 12 reigns. Le. So I find that more, the more I teach, the more I help people, the more happier I became. And what happened to me in the past, le, uh, it does come, but I counter it with all the good things I do at the moment. Yep. So it brings me a lot of happiness and joy. Yeah. The things that that I did in the past, I was taking advantage of. I felt like I was used, and they just used me to get their, their gain. And uh, once they got what they want, they just pushed me aside, yeah, and got other people to, uh, to take over. Yeah. So I, I felt like I was a spare tire, just being used at the time, yeah, because there's no one there. So when they use me, when things are doing very well, when there's no debt, when there's a lot of money coming in, and there's full of people coming supporting the place, then they say, ah, oh, yeah, you just step aside, yeah? We have uh, other people that can run the place better and do a better job. Le. I, I felt really angry and, and used. Le. And also, like, basically, um, <sighs> yeah, it's like, it's like you see people suffering, yeah? And you want to help them because they're having a hard time. Eh? But once everything is doing well, le, it's like they, they forget you. Le. It's like you're just another monk. Eh? You're a young monk. You don't give the best time to talk. Like, yeah, we got better monks as older, le, and they give better talks. Le. Yeah, that, that made me very upset. Le. Yeah, so when I came back to Bodhiyana, the monks called me, yeah, this 
It's just so negative and grumpy. I was angry for two weeks. After that, I just become more relaxed and more happier. <laughs> because I was overworked. Overworked, put down and humiliated. Yeah, and felt, I felt I was used and degraded and scolded all the time. <laughs> all I did was trying to help, help, help a place out there. So I understand, that's quite normal. We all go through that. On the retreat, that's the most common thing that came out with a lot of people. How do you deal with the problem? So I always gave the example of Arjun Brown's story, the two bad bricks. So Arjun Brown was putting the bricks up in the early days, doing a lot of hard work. And, um, and he put two bricks and he got out of place uh, and he sat. Uh, so every time he saw the brick, two bad bricks, uh, he got really angry uh, and he really wanted to um, dis like, destroy it, pull it down, start over again, or get the dynamite and blow it up. Uh. But Ajahn Jaguaro at the time was an abbot, so um, Brahma won soul. Uh, was still a, a middle monk? Uh, no. Leave it as it is. Uh, and just continue. So when Arjun Brown will walk past, he see the two back bricks, he'll get really upset again. <laughs> yeah. And uh, one time he was showing them people around the monastery, yeah? and uh, then he showed them the, the wall, and the, uh, the people say, wow, look at that wall, it's so beautiful. And Arjun was, Arjun was saying, are you blind? Don't you see the two back bricks up there? And the, and the guy said, yes. I can, do, I can see the two bad bricks uh, out of place, uh, but I can see the 99, um, 99, 9, 999 good bricks. Uh. And Archan was saying, oh, that's true. Uh. He laid two bad bricks, but the rest of the bricks is just perfect. And he realized life is like that. We always bring up the past. We always bring up the hurt. We always think up it's not fair. It should not happen. We felt that we were exploited and used and taken advantage. Or when family members start passing away or dying, yeah, and we miss them. Uh, yeah, so that's one thing I realized uh, on uh, going on retreats uh, and uh, talking to people, uh, everyone's suffering. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So, um, yeah, so when I, when I think of things that happen to me that's not nice uh, or being taken advantage, uh, then I realized, okay, I'm thinking of the two bad bricks. <laughs> I need to let it go no? and look at the 99, 9, 999 good bricks. Uh. Yeah. So I think all the good things I, I did, and uh, it makes me happy. Uh. Yeah. And I told the people on, on the retreat, uh, if you ever come to um, Bodhiyana Monastery, uh, feel free to ask me uh, if you see me, uh, and I'll take you straight to the two back bricks. Uh. Yeah. So yeah, so if you ever come to Bodhiyana, uh, ask me, uh, and I'll show you the two back bricks. Uh. <laughs> Yeah, so, yeah, life can be tough, but we, sh we just keep on doing good things, purify our heart, le, and just let go le, of, the, um, of the hurt le, or, the, or the unfairness of, of, the, of the world. Le. If we don't let go, le, then what we do is we try to make things even and take, take it out on other people that have done us wrong. Le. And by doing that, le, basically we're just making more bad karma. So it's always good to forgive other people. But the most important thing uh, is forgive yourself. Uh, that's very important. Yeah. So uh, yeah, so that's something hard I find uh, um, to do. Uh, but I just keep on forgiving myself and realize I'm not a perfect monk. But as long as it's self, <laughs> it's suffering. But no, when the mind is calm and very peaceful, uh, then the self disappears. Uh, then you realize, yeah, there's peace, happiness, and freedom. Okay. Anyway, I hope that makes sense. It made wonderful sense to me and what wonderful advice. Thank you, Ajahn. Ajahn, uh, would you like to finish with a blessing for us all in Pali? Or ah, yes. Goodbye? Yes. yes, okay. So this is basically may, may the teaching of the Buddha, Dharma, and Sangha protect you. La wherever you go la nati ne sananangano putu ne sananangano ete nasajawate ya sutite hote sapata nati ne sananangano tamu ne sananangano ete nasajawate na 
สุติเตโหตุสัพพตานาติเนสารนานยานุสังโฆเมสารนานยานุเอตินาสัจวัตินาสุติเตโหตุสัพพตาโอเค so that's a quick blessing yeah and um yeah please take care wherever you are I'm I do admit life can be a bit tough now um life can be very busy there's so much responsibility there's so much things happening in the world it seems like the world is a uh, very frightening and dark place eh? but on the last day of the retreat eh, I told the retreat eh, why complain about the problem of the world eh? if you can like a, a light of wisdom in one's heart and mind eh? yep and that will basically free us from the darkness of the world so we should just develop our heart eh, and our mind eh? And that way we're free, free from um, just the, um, the the things that happen in the world. We cannot change the world, but we can change our heart, and that is the most precious thing in the world. Yeah. So when we purify our heart, we do good, then we become happy and free. Yeah. Okay. Thank you.